Hey everyone, and welcome to the second episode of my Pokemath series, where I'll be making short videos and some of the maths behind Pokemon game mechanics. In this episode, we'll be dealing with critical hits in Generation 1. As a child playing Pokemon Red a hundred years ago, critical hits were a mystery to me, like most of the game mechanics we'll be covering in this series were. After hours and hours of playing, I was able to deduce three things. They seemed to do way more damage than a regular hit, they were seemingly random, and it was only fair when I got them, not when my opponent got them. Now these mysteries have been solved, so let's go on a deep dive into critical hits. In my last episode, we looked at the damage equation, which I'd simplified by removing the critical hit modifier, so let's add that back in. If a Pokemon doesn't get a critical hit, this modifier becomes times 1, and therefore the damage output isn't changed from what we had last time. However, if a Pokemon scores a critical hit, this modifier becomes times 2. What you might notice is that this is not a times 2 to the total damage, it's specifically a times 2 to the level of the Pokemon. So a higher level Pokemon is going to benefit more from a critical hit than a lower level one would. And also, thanks to the constant rounding down, and also the plus 2s that were so important to handle zero damage in the last episode, the times 2 to level doesn't quite equate to a times 2 to final damage. Using our Parasect v Sandslash example from last time, we can see that for a non-critical hit the max damage is 177. And if we add in our times 2 modifier to the level for a critical hit, the max damage is 336. 336 is 1.9 times 177, so not quite 2, but pretty close. For a level 5 Pokemon, the difference critical hit makes will be less. Taking an example of a level 5 Charmander versus a level 5 Bulbasaur, we can see a critical hit is 1.5 times a normal hit. Let's see the critical hit damage modifier in practice. I have my level 50 Scyther and he's fighting Bruno Zonix. I've only given myself normal type moves, and so to compensate for Brock's resistance I'll be using Sword Stance three times before attacking, to massively increase my attack stat. Looking at the non-crit first, entering our values into the formula gives us a range from 51 to 61. And as we can see, looks like that's correct, as Onyx has 108 health, and we did about half. Now for the crit. Adding our times 2 modifier to the level gives us a range from 98 to 116. So we should either one-shot, or get very close to a one-shot. Huh. Well, that did less than the non-critical. We've stumbled upon another Generation 1 quirk. While non-crits use the user and opponent's modified stats, critical hits ignore stat changes and use the unmodified values. This was fixed in later generations, and so I believe the original intention was to ignore just the enemy's defense boosts. Azure attack was so powerful and focused that it bypassed the opponent's attempt to defend itself. But due to an oversight, we also ignore our attack changes. And so our critical hitting Scyther will actually be doing anywhere from 24 to 29 damage. If your goal is to boost your own stats, or reduce your opponent's stats before you attack, then you'd better hope it's not a critical hit. So that's the effect of a critical hit, but how and when do they come about? A move being a critical hit is decided when a random number between 0 and 255 is less than the critical hit threshold. The critical hit threshold in Generation 1 is half the Pokémon's base speed. Note that it's base speed and not current speed, so no matter how many Carbos you shovel into your Rhyhorn, its critical hit chance is not going to change. And so critical hits favour speedy Pokémon. The fastest Pokemon in Gen 1, Electrode, has a base speed of 140, so it has a critical threshold of 70, giving it a 70 in 256, or 27% chance to crit. On the other end of the spectrum, Slowpoke being the slowest Pokemon has a base speed of 15, so it has a critical threshold of 7 as we always round down to whole numbers, giving it a 7 in 256, or 2.7% chance to crit. The threshold can be modified in two ways using crit chance boosting moves or items, or using high crit ratio moves. The move focus energy and the item dire hit have the same effect, that being multiplying the threshold by 4, making it 4 times as likely to land a critical hit. Or at least that was the idea. But instead of multiplying by 4, they accidentally divided by 4, and so using these actually quarters your chances of landing a critical hit. As for high crit ratio moves, these are Karate Chop, Razor Leaf, Crab Hammer, and Slash. When these moves are used, the critical hit threshold is multiplied by 8, capped at a max of 255. Which means if a Pokemon's base speed is large enough, using one of these moves will give us an 100% chance to land a critical hit. While technically even 100% chances are actually 255 out of 256, but I'll cover that in the next episode. 
So looking at the base speed of Pokemon using high crit ratio moves, we can see that if we have a base speed of 65 or above, you'll pretty much be critting all of the time. And so in conclusion, if you're using a razor leafing Venusaur, don't use growth. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something because I definitely did. If there's any game mechanics you'd like me to do an episode on, then please let me know. Next time, I'll be looking at accuracy. See ya!